How many do we have with us? I believe we have at least three so far. Okay, well, great. Um, welcome, everyone. Um, my name is Professor John Rennie. Uh, I'm with the Department of Urban and Regional Planning. And uh, oops, sometimes when I share a screen, I got multiple monitors, doesn't work. So I'm just going to kind of share, show it to you in this mode. Um, we have two undergraduate programs in our department, and it one is in urban and regional planning, and one is in urban design. And I'll show you a little bit about the differences of those two programs here in a minute. But first, I think it's important for you to know what do urban planners do? And so um, urban planners, you know, we often say architects, most people know that architects design buildings. Um, most people know that um, engineers design bridges and highways. Um, but what urban planners do is we kind of look at designing the whole cities. Um, and this can take really two different major forms. Okay, one is a focus on policy issues, uh, which can be environmental planning or environmental policies. It could uh, address uh, topics like housing or economic development or transportation systems. Um, the other major focus focuses more on design and, and we have a degree called the Bachelor of Urban Design. Um, so in the Department of Urban and Planning, we look at topics like planning and zoning. This sets the framework for where development goes, what it looks like, um, and it, write, it basically helps to write the rules for real estate developers who are building communities. Um, housing, community development, transportation, environmental, land development, urban design, these are all uh, things I just kind of mentioned. Um, we look at sustainable development, uh, looking across uh, economic environment and creating socially equitable communities. Um, we look at how do you um, how do you respond to climate change? That's a big topic we're looking at. How do you better prepare cities to address sea level rise? Um, these are these are all topics that we, we look at. Um, I run a center in our department called the Center for Urban Environmental Solutions, and my colleague Diana Mitsova runs the Visual Planning Technology Lab. We bring in all sorts of innovative technologies, including virtual reality, ge geographic information systems. Um, we we look at um, SketchUp, uh, you know, a whole bunch of different programs, three dimensional rendering. That's what SketchUp does, um, and so we work with. We work with cities, a lot of government agencies to get these technologies into the hands of communities so that way residents can understand what are the issues they're facing, what are the proposals that they're looking at, you know, what are the different development proposals and how can they how can they use these tools to better interact with communities to make decisions about their communities for the future. And when we say the future, you know, we're not talking like one or two or three years. We're talking about laying the groundwork for what our cities are going to look like over the next 10, 20, 30, and 50 and 100 years. So if you're interested in like, how do you make the world a better place? And how do you do that for future generations? Th this is very much at the core of what urban planners and urban designers do. I'm the coordinator of the two undergraduate degrees in our department uh, in Bachelor of Urban Regional Planning and Bachelor of Urban Design. There's a lot of overlap between the two programs. In the, in the Bachelor of Urban Regional Planning, this is our core. We have 39 credits. Students in our department take classes in geosciences, um, and they also take a class in public administration. Uh, but they take most of their core in our department um, and, and they look at topics like um, uh, how do you uh, plan and zone your cities? 
what what are the city structures and how do cities change and evolve over time? Um, how do you plan sites? How do you do site planning? And that, that means where do the buildings go? Where do the public space go? Um, sustainable cities, capital facilities planning, and um, we have a planning capstone, and then of course a bunch of electives. Um, in the urban design degree, uh, we have courses that focus more on on urban design, obviously. So um, theories and methods. We also have a lot of overlap with GIS and zoning and visual planning technologies and site planning. But then we have a studio sequence of um, urban design studio one, urban design studio two, and urban design capstone, along with our sustainable cities class and then the electives. So um, uh, that's pretty much, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen. Uh, this is my, uh, well, you can email that or you can email me. I'll, I'll put my email address in the chat window. But I just want to wrap up by saying, what, you know, what are the job prospects in urban planning? And I can tell you that South Florida needs urban planners. It's a very rewarding career because you get to use your right brain and your left brain. Uh, you get to look at, you know, you can have conversations with environmental scientists and engineers, and you can have conversations with people who are advocating for social equity and affordable housing. Um, jobs are in all different types of different types of sectors. So you can work for local government, you can work for county government, you can work for state agencies, you can work for federal agencies. There's also a robust private sector, um, architectural firms, engineering firms, planning firms, and even law firms all hire urban planners. And there's even a robust array of jobs in the nonprofit world. You know, organizations like Thousand Friends of Florida, Sierra Club, um, you know, a whole bunch of different uh, environmentally focused or affordable housing focused uh, or even transportation advocacy nonprofit organizations that hire urban planners. There's a there's more jobs than students right now, and it's been that way for many years, especially in South Florida. Most of our undergraduate students obtain internships making you know, around 15 bucks an hour. And, uh, you know, after, you know, a year or two of experience, uh, some of our students even earn as much as $20 an hour. All of our students right now, and, and as long as I've been at FAU, which has been five years, have all gotten jobs very quickly upon graduating, because again, there's a shortage of urban planners. Um, and I'll say that even during the COVID pandemic, the the city governments and state agencies are, are really, really busy right now, and they are still continuing to hire urban planners. Um, so we're a part of that is being in Florida because it's a state that's growing. When there's growth and challenges like climate change and sea level rise, um, urban planners are hired to help think about those, those issues. So um, thank you so much. And I look forward to any questions that you may have. And I hope to see one or more of you hopefully enroll in our degree programs. Thank you. Thanks, John. I don't know if you're going to answer this real quick question. I think James is close to getting in. He came in as an attendee instead of a panelist, so he's, I think he's really close. But I did get some statistics from Ella Tepper in the Career Center stating that um, urban design and urban planners on average with a master's degree make in the 90s. So I'm guessing 40 to 60 is a decent starting salary for bachelor students? Yeah, bachelor students are earning starting salaries, you know, in the 40s to 60s. Um, and I would say that, you know, if you you tend to get an internship, like I said, making between 15 to $20 an hour, which, you know, equates to about 20 to $30,000 a year if it were a full-time salary. Um, once you get your degree, as long as you had a little experience, you know, your, your, your starting wages, I haven't seen many jobs in Florida that starts less than 45,000. Um, we have a combined program, so you can go straight into the master's program and knock off a semester. So you can do your master's in three semesters rather than four semesters. 
And it sounds about right that, you know, starting salaries in the masters probably range in the 55 to, you know, $70,000 range. And then after you've got about five years of experience um, with the master's degree, uh, certainly there's a lot of upward mobility in South Florida um, and across the country for that matter, um, where, you know, earning uh, a salary in the 80 to 100 thousand dollar range with five years of experience um, is is very doable and about about those numbers you quoted sound about right to me. Okay, great. That's good to know. All right, I'm just working on getting James the host link. Um, Antonella, can you resend that to him real quick? Do you, or Tiffany, are you able to send that? Yeah, I'm gonna send it right now. Okay, thanks. And then we can have James start talking next. Tiffany, do you want to introduce yourself while we're waiting? Hello, everybody. Yes, I'm a, I'm Professor Tiffany Briggs. I'm a coastal geologist in the Department of Geosciences. And uh, I was hoping to, to speak with you all today a little bit about, um, you know, answer questions about our geology major and minor. Um, James, who is still uh, trying to join, actually has our presentation. Um, so, uh, I'm happy to kind of hang out and hang tight. Hopefully he can get in. I don't, or, if, um, Dr. <laughs> Owen wants to take our place and we'll kick the can just a few more minutes until hopefully <laughs> James is able to join. And, and if not, I can certainly walk you through some of the exciting opportunities in the department of geosciences. All right. Dr. Owen, you want to, do you want to give your presentation about the environmental science certificate? Yeah, I, I think putting me last was was actually a um a good idea because I think the I'm not going to be talking about biology. I'll be talking about the environmental science certificate. And um but what I can say is that the 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 environmental science certificate um is it can be a perfect um sort of partner to a geosciences degree or an urban and regional planning degree. Um it for biology students, the environmental science certificate brings in the GIS, the geosciences and the urban and regional planning that biology students might not be familiar with. And then for geoscience and urban and regional planning students, um, through the environmental science certificate, they get some of the, uh, you know, the biology and, um, you know, community ecology, the things that they wouldn't necessarily get in their um, major degree. So it's a good partner that gives you a, a more well-rounded resume for, for example, um, going into, uh, you know, there's positions in environmental resource protection. And, um, you know, for example, those nonprofits that uh, work with urban and regional planners, but whose focus is, uh, say, environmental sustainability. So the the uh, environmental science certificate is kind of a partner, I think, a, a good partner to degrees in geosciences or urban and regional planning or biology. And so that was kind of why I thought it was appropriate for me to go last. But um, well, it, actually, I, uh, Dr. Owen, James was able to join if you want to still have that last spot. I think okay. Can All right. All right. All right. Let's try to get back to our regularly <laughs> scheduled program. <laughs> Perfect. James, I was James. I was kind of making blabbing to give you room to start. <laughs> what I said was very important, and I think you know, I, I think students as they kind of find out what they're interested in, as they get further into their their college career, they can start designing their their of, of their courses um, and their minors or their certificates to kind of fit what they particularly are interested in. So, I'll let you take it away, James. <laughs> And James, you should have privileges to share your screen. Sure. Can you all hear me? Yes. Well, um, thank you very much. I, I greatly appreciate your uh, patience as we work through those <laughs> technical difficulties, such as life in the middle of a pandemic. Uh, welcome to all who are here, who um, come to hear a little bit about our department. We certainly appreciate um, you taking the time to to be with us. And so, yeah, we we do have a, a little presentation planned and um, I'll jump into that right now if I can try to share my screen. Let's see here. Good. Share. 
And are you all able to see my screen? Yes, we can see it. Yes. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Okay, good. So, um, as you can see here, uh, my name is James Emma Clark. I'm a senior instructor at Port Atlantic University Department of Geosciences, and I've been with the department for 15 years, which means I'm getting uh, pretty ancient, especially by your standards, no doubt. And of course, uh, Dr. Briggs is with me, and she kindly filled in while we were trying to get joined as a presenter rather than a mere attendee. Uh, and so, you know, I represent uh, that part of the geosciences department um, that is the geography side of the house. I'm a geographer by training, and uh, Dr. Briggs represents the geology side of the house. She's a geologist by training, and of course, she's specifically a coastal geomorphologist, which she might have had a bit of a chance to, to uh, discuss with you uh, while I was trying to get logged in there. Um, as I was suggesting, I do have a video I'd like to share with you now. So let's go take a Geosciences help us better understand the planet that we call home. This is increasingly important as we address issues such as climate change, sea level rise, and natural disasters like hurricanes. Geoscientists study the Earth in every possible aspect, surveying it on the surface, underground, and from the air, cataloging its geologic history, analyzing the spatial patterns of various phenomena, predicting changes in the future, and planning for their implications. Students that study geosciences have the opportunity to experience all that nature has to offer. And at FAU, the world becomes your classroom. The strong field-based research component that includes study areas throughout South Florida and across the globe. This is complemented by the cutting edge science conducted in our labs, which are equipped with state-of-the-art technology. Our program provides the flexibility you need, allowing students to pick and choose between traditional and fully online classes. The rich and varied experiences offered by the geosciences prepare students for wide-ranging and rewarding career opportunities. Our alumni have gone on to work for nonprofit organizations, education and research institutes, various companies in the private sector, and governmental agencies. If you are seeking a career of the future, one that encourages you to travel the globe and engage in exciting science that helps us to better understand how the world works, then you should become a geoscientist and help save the planet that we call home. Good, so um, hopefully that came through. And uh, you know, the point of that particular presentation is to hopefully uh, explain for some of you exactly what the geosciences is, because uh, it's not something that you know everybody who uh, joins the um, college for the first time has a clear grasp on. Uh, they, uh, you might have a better sense of what geography or geology is. Uh, but still, you know, a lot of majors join the university and they, they only discover uh, the major after they've they've tried other programs and then uh, they get to try a few of our freshman classes and they decide that they, they really like it and that's how we get a lot of our majors. And of course, um, part of the reason that we're having this uh, meeting today is to try to uh, direct a few more of you into the program uh, from the get-go rather than uh, discovering it later on. So. Um, Given that presentation, given that video, let me go ahead and try to explain, explain a little bit further. So again, geography is the all-encompassing study of the planet upon which we live. So we're interested in trying to figure out why things are located where they are. Okay. Um, there are going to be various causes for that. that. That could be a result of physical processes, so nature working on the earth, or it could be a process of human activity, right? We, we decide where we build things and where we live and where we do the various activities that we do. But of course, those two go hand in hand, right? The physical environment uh, dictates in many ways uh, where we do the things we do. And of course, we locate ourselves in places to take advantage of uh, the various resources that uh, offer to us on the face of the planet. Okay. So uh, we geographers, we, we split up the discipline into two major subcategories that's physical geography and human geography. 
And then uh, bridging that is geographic information sciences, or what we call GIS, and that's my specialty, right? So uh, the idea with GIS is it allows you to use computers to make maps. That's that's it in its most basic element. And um, you probably all use GIS, even if you haven't realized it. So if you've ever used the mapping application on your phone, or uh, Google Earth or Google Maps, anything to that effect, you've used GIS, just a very lightweight version of GIS. So at its most basic form, it's about making maps with the computers, but in its more advanced form, it's actually about analyzing spatial patterns, and seeing what's going on and, and using uh, cool uh, toys like GPS devices and uh, drones and things of that, that nature to get out in the field and uh, actually conduct some mapping. And, and that's the picture you see in the in the top right hand corner there. That's uh, myself working with Tiffany at, at the uh, beach here in Brooklyn to, to map coastal change. Good. And then, of course, the other side of the house is geology. And of course, geology also studies uh, the earth. Um, but it's more concerned with the structural makeup of the earth. Okay, so it, it looks at, at the uh, various forces that shaped the Earth's surface throughout geologic time scale. And of course, that includes studying uh, paleontology, right? All, all the organisms that existed on the Earth's surface throughout geologic time. Okay, and so obviously the study of the Earth in its present context and the study of the Earth over geologic time, they go, they go together and, and that creates the development of geosciences. And in the bottom right hand corner, you see a, a wonderful picture of Dr. Lenick. Uh, with his students on a uh, summer field camp, which uh, they run out west, mostly in the Colorado area, but obviously uh, not exclusively there. Uh, so that's a six week course that serves as a capstone for the geology seeds. Good. And so the department has um, various focus areas, uh, and that's spread out amongst the geographers and the geologists together. And we, we term these focus areas as the environment, society, and technology. And uh, on the right hand side there, you see a, a, a great picture of Dr. Briggs, uh, the back of her head. <laughs> and uh, she and her students there are doing a sediment pour on uh, the beach. Again, not surprising, she's a coastal geologist, uh, coastal geomorphologist, excuse me. Okay. So uh, we break up those uh, focus areas as. Earth system science, human environmental systems, and geographic information systems. Okay, so let's let's talk about those in a little bit more detail. So, Earth system sciences study the forces and processes that determine the past, present, and future states of the Earth environment, developing sustainability practices as a result. And so, the department's particular strengths in that area include not only Dr. Briggs with uh, uh, coastal geomorphology. Uh, which you see again another picture of our students on the right there uh, conducting a total station survey of a beach profile, but also uh, biogeography, hydrogeology, uh, near surface geophysics, and uh, paleoenvironment, paleoenvironmental climates and sedimentology. Okay, so the picture you see in the upper right hand corner is uh, Dr. Komat uh, working on geophysics and. Uh, Presumably, he's he's using GPR in that photograph to look at some uh, peatlands and see how uh, those peatlands have changed over time. Good. So uh, the third, the second uh, uh, focus area then is geographic information science, which I alluded to. And so this is where we use all that technology that I was referring to to really try to figure out uh, what's occurring where it's occurring so why things are occurring where they do and the goal is to use the technology to uh, try to make what we call the implicit explicit okay so we're looking to find patterns that might not be uh, obvious to the naked eye figure out uh, what's going on so that we can explain how the various processes that we see on the earth's surface whether they be natural or or anthropogenic occur as they do, and then to hopefully uh, project out into the future how they might change if we if we model that type of behavior. So in the upper right hand corner, you see some of my students um, on a trip to uh, the dry Tortugas off of Key West using mobile GIS to uh, map out that particular 
uh, fort that, that's down there. And in the bottom right hand corner over here, we see uh, a artistic rendering of a global navigation satellite. Specifically, this is the European Galileo satellite. And of course, you can see in the background there that the part of the Earth's surface that's being displayed is Europe, because it's, in this case, it was the European Space Agency that launched that particular satellite. And so, you know, GPS and global navigation satellite systems, a tool that, you know, the entire planet is dependent upon these days, but it's particularly advantageous to all geoscientists. So uh, whenever Dr. Briggs goes out and, and uh, performs her coastal stream morphology surveys, I mean, she will always bring with her not only a, a total station uh, to, to conduct traditional topographic surveys, but oftentimes a very precise uh, type of GPS called RTK GPS. It's called real-time kinematic GPS, which allows you to survey the location of features down to the nearest centimeter, which is really, really cool. Yeah. So in our case, uh, we have faculty that excel in uh, multi-sensor and hyperspectral systems, uh, as well as LIDAR remote sensing, uh, unmanned aerial systems, which we call drones, and that's one of my areas, areas of specialty, as well as mobile GIS, as I've just alluded to, uh, spatial modeling and data analysis, uh, geovisualization, and applied GIS. And then finally, our little subset is human environmental interaction. So this is a, uh, a way that uh, our scientists seek to understand the relationship between people and their environments. And so uh, in the upper right hand corner here, you see one of our very popular professors, her name is Dr. Fadiman, and uh, she was designated as a National Geographic Young Emerging Explorer. And she travels all over the world and has these really fantastic discussions with uh, people and their cultures and how they use uh, plants, right? She's an ethnobotanist. Uh, so, you know, if you, if, you're, if you join the university already, you might have taken her world geography class and you had a chance to uh, experience her lecture style. Everybody agrees that she's uh, highly entertaining. If you haven't, I highly recommend that you uh, seek out her world geography class to get started and then hopefully move on to some of uh, um, her classes in the upper division and, and maybe graduate school. Good. Um, so in our department, again, we have uh, faculty who focus on climate change, uh, like Dr. Johansson, and uh, ecological restoration. I shouldn't say Dr. Johansson exclusively. Some people might get upset. Obviously, he's not the only scientist in our department who's doing climate change, but that's one of his focus. Uh, ecological restoration, like Dr. Markwith, ethnobotany, I mentioned Dr. Fadiman, sustainability sciences, and also uh, water resources. Okay, and that, that'll straddle both the geography and geology side of the house. So uh, you should also know that as a student of the geosciences, there are many opportunities to get out into the field to conduct uh, your research. So that's research both at the undergraduate level and at the graduate level. And of course, this is super important because you know most uh, geoscientists become geoscientists because they don't be really stuck behind a, a desk the rest of their lives. If you'd like getting out of the field, and, and that's, again, what, what draws most people to the uh, discipline, you know, we can do this as geoscientists, right? So the, the, really the environment becomes your classroom in, in our department. And so, uh, you know, we have various uh, field trips, not only throughout uh, South Florida, but indeed um, throughout the country. And there are also opportunities to travel internationally to study also. So one such example is the one week field camp to Appalachia, which I've been on many times myself. Uh, that's always done during uh, spring break, again, not during the pandemic. Um, and it's a great opportunity to, to get to see some geology that's a little bit different from the geology that, that you see in South Florida. So uh, you can imagine there's a lot more variety in terms of, you know, outcrops and the like up in Appalachia than there are uh, down here in South Florida. So that's exciting. And then, uh, as I mentioned before, we have a six week field camp out west to Capstone. Uh, the geology program. Yep. And then you can also note that our, our faculty are doing research not only uh, throughout the country, but indeed uh, all over the world and, and uh, students uh, will have the opportunity if selected to work with these 
faculty members to uh, engage in some of that research. We also have uh, highly sophisticated cutting edge uh, labs in the department uh, to afford students uh, access to the latest and greatest technology when it comes to uh, conducting their, their research. So uh, our labs include uh, biogeography research, coastal studies, environmental geophysics, a water analysis lab, environmental change lab, a paleoenvironmental research lab, ethnobotany and conservation lab, remote education and assessment of critical habits, <laughs> also known as REACH, and of course the Center for GIS. Um, I should mention, uh, and we discussed this in uh, the video briefly, but if you missed it, one of the advantages of the department is that, you know, we, we make available to students a mixture of both online and traditional classes. Um, and there are both online and traditional classes in both sides of the department, but on the geography side, we have uh, an entire degree can be taken online if you wish. Um, the BA in Geosciences or the focus in geography, is, it can be taken entirely online, or you can take it as a mixture of online and traditional classes. And that's uh, true also for our Bachelor of Science in Geosciences with a focus in geography, with the exception of uh, one biology class, of which um, we'll see in the future if, if that becomes available fully online in the future, which they may be doing given their experience in the pandemic. But worst case scenario, you know, if you wanted to investigate doing that online, you could, you know, do it as a, a transfer student from a, another uh, institution, or you could take that one class in person and do the rest online. Uh, but if you prefer to uh, a digital experience, we, off, we can offer that too. Good. Um, we also have minors in both geography and geology and uh, geographic information science, as well as GIS certificates, and, and that really. Uh, is helpful because you know we have a lot of students come to our program from other disciplines. Uh, you know they want to study biology, or they want to study history, or they want to study criminal justice, or they want to study geomatics, just to name a few examples. Um, but you know all of these disciplines, they they often find it very handy to have uh, GIS skills, right? So if, if you're a, a biologist and you want to uh, study sharks or, or dolphins or turtles or whatever the case may be, you know, being able to track the location of those various organisms becomes very important. And of course, it's not just a case of tracking them. You, you want to be able to uh, map and analyze their movements and their, their patterns of, uh, of, of how they move and, and where they reside and so on and so forth. Okay, so GIS is a truly uh, multidisciplinary uh, application. Uh, we also have a uh, graduate program, so we have both a uh, master of science in geoscience, in which you can focus in both geography or geology, and also a PhD in geosciences, um, where again, you can focus in geography or geology. Okay? And then there are also uh, graduate GIS certificates. So if you're working in a, uh, on a graduate degree in another discipline, but again, once you get those, uh, those GIS skills, we have classes that you can take at the graduate level such that you don't have to why about and uh, enrolling in the lower um, or the undergraduate classes as a deficiency, right? You can take them at the graduate level instead and still, you know, quickly matriculate towards graduation. So um, we actually have a, uh, we're just now finishing up a very nice uh, career guide. Uh, we're just making a, a, a few final edits. Uh, so if you're interested in the geosciences and are, are wondering to yourself, well, you know, that's great that I can become a geoscientist and, uh, you know, it's great that I can go and, and study outside on occasion and I'm not stuck in my class all the time, but will it offer me a job? Will I actually be able to turn this into a career? Well, the answer is yes. And there are some examples here of some, of some different jobs that, that you might uh, encounter, but if you're interested, please, uh, you can send me an email at jgamak at fau.edu, or you can even send an email to a, a brand new email address we have, which is called geo at fau.edu, geo at fau.edu. Uh, just, you know, send an email and give us, you know, a, a little bit of your details and, and we'll reply back with a, with a nice career guide that 
that shows you some examples of praise that can be had in the geosciences uh, and uh, the associated salaries that come with those careers according to uh, the Department of Labor. So please, 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 if you're interested, go ahead and send us an, an email. And that's it. So um, there is a website, www.geosciences.fau.edu. If you go there, um, you will find a video that I shared at the beginning of uh, this presentation. And uh, you'll also find a link where you can request a download of, of the uh, study of the career guide if you're interested. And then here is my email and Dr. Briggs's email in case you have questions for us individually. Okay, and, and that's the end of the presentation. So if you have any questions, I'll be happy to take them. Otherwise, um, I guess we'll have to move on to uh, Dr. Owen, which is, of course, saving the best for last. <laughs> Thanks, James. All right, so um, just before Dr. Owen um, has a couple minutes to talk, we scheduled this workshop for an hour just in case, so I don't know if it'll automatically cut off, just as a fair warning. Um, but Diane, feel free to give a little bit of an overview of the environmental science certificate and how it ties in with these, uh, with the urban design uh, or the urban and regional planning department and the geoscience programs. Thanks. Okay, uh, yeah, I think a lot of the things that students would be most interested in are uh, have already been. Uh, you know, touched on so my presentation is going to be very um, short and oops, it looks like my screen is being cut off here. Um, Hmm. Okay, so yes, in the environmental science program at the undergraduate level, we have an environmental science certificate and and this certificate is really ideal for students in geosciences, whether geography or geology, urban and regional design, uh, biology, because it it gives those students in, who are in each of those uh, majors, it gives them an opportunity to broaden out into the areas that help to to give them the foundation in areas that they might not have gotten through their degree program that will open up more career opportunities for them so why get a certificate in environmental science well environmental science which is again that entire uh, combination of skills that come from many different areas and it's projected to grow dramatically as compared to other professions uh, between 2019 and, 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 and 2029. And the average salary, the median wage was $71,000. So we've talked earlier about in a in manner similar to, um, you know, in urban and regional planning or in uh, geosciences, you know, the, the entry level salary, depending on your internships and experience, uh, will be probably lower than that, but someone who say goes on to a master's degree um, and and has been in the field and 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 moved up can be earning much more than that. And obviously the growth, uh, I think, um, you know, we've talked about today already about the reasons why uh, environmental science and environmental scientists are a growing need. So this is just, you know, the environmental scientists are not just people who deal with the living part of the environment. This shows an example of some of the living systems type of environmental science careers, but these can be, um, you know, land use attorneys, political scientists, um, urban and regional phytopharmaceutical research, specialized careers in many different fields are part of that environmental science career path. And this is just a very long list of places where our undergraduate students, many of them with, with BS degrees and an environmental science certificate, places where they've gone on to find um, jobs after graduation. And if you go on to graduate work in uh, any of these uh, fields, you can move up even further into the uh, possibilities that you have for employment right here in Florida and, and really around the world. And as you see here, there's government agencies, there's um, 
private consulting businesses, and there's also um, you know many nonprofits. And I got my start in environmental science, actually, uh, working uh, with nonprofit groups. So environmental scientists do so many things, and you've already seen all of the things that, that you can do in geoscience and in urban and regional planning, and environmental scientists are part of that entire uh, career uh, possibilities that open up for you when you have a background in environmental science. And some of these are from, these are undergraduate students who are getting the environmental certificate at FAU, have, who have done many of these research projects that are shown here. And these are projects done uh, with faculty here at the FAU who have experience in everything from uh, like Dr. Briggs, uh, working on, on coastal uh, morphology and, and, and geophysics to, uh, you know, people working in wetlands, uh, people working on animal behavior and interactions. And our faculty, and this is the faculty throughout the College of Science and even beyond the faculty of, of, of the College of Science, our faculty have expertise in many of the important components of, of what we call environmental science, which, which has its, its nexus is how do human activities interact with the natural environment and how do we plan for sustainability? So whether it's hydrology, invasive species, pollution, uh, wetland destruction, economics, um, you know, planning and policy, all of these things are part of the, what our faculty at FAU is incredibly, you know, well placed to work with students and give them experience in these fields. So, Within, if you are a student in environmental science um, at FAU and working on your certificate, one of the things that the environmental science program has done, and, and students in many different uh, majors have been able to be a part of this, you don't have to be uh, an environmental science certificate student to be part of the Manatee Master's Program, which is a paid student internship uh, sponsored by the environmental science program that is um, paid by FPL at the Manatee Lagoon in Lake Worth. Um, we also have extensive research opportunities. Uh, many professors at FAU who are um, in, in the College of Science and in the College of Social Sciences as well uh, are doing research at the FAU Preserve. Um, and another thing that many of our environmental science certificate students do is contribute to citizen science projects, which are projects that get them outdoors to really um, help scientists to all over the world and within their local communities to get information and to uh, take advantage of, of the technological abilities we have now and the artificial intelligence that we have now that allows citizen scientists and students in our, in our environmental science program who do not have extensive experience or background to really get out and start contributing and being part of you know, important science projects um, you know, throughout Florida and you know, many of them are, are worldwide in scope. So participating in citizen science projects is one of the, um, the real focus areas that, that we um, encourage in the environmental science program. And just real quick, so the environmental science certificate is a total of 18 credits. And the courses that you take for the certificate for students who are in any department major in the College of Science, many, if not all, of those certificate credits can also count towards completion of the degree program. So you have um, you take three courses in one of each three core areas, 
and you also have to take three courses that you choose from three different uh, areas of the, the focal areas. So this is where, this is the part of the uh, certificate program where you can branch out and maybe take a course or two in something that, you know, isn't required for your major, but will allow you to gain some experience and maybe even, you know, work on a research project that will allow you to, you know, go into, uh, you know, a job search with your resume that includes some background in something that you might not otherwise have gotten from your, uh, your major degree. And our environmental science students really have a lot of fun. Um, they have, uh, they're the ones who have actually created and maintain the uh, the Tortuga Trail at the FAU Preserve. And in fact, uh, just after this meeting, I'm having a meeting with the SEEDS students, which is the student chapter of the Ecological Society of America. Um, almost all of our SEEDS students um, are all earning the environmental science certificate along with their majors in general. And uh, they've done a lot of work at the FAU Preserve and also um, in, in various ecological projects around the country. And if you'd like more information, you can visit our website and I will unshare my screen now. All of the information pretty much that I just gave you is on our website. And um, let me give you my email address here in the chat box. Thank you so much, Dr. Owen. So I just want to take a minute to thank everybody for the presentations. Um, thank you to the students who came out to listen to everything. I know a lot of the students who came out today were some of my um, advisees, so we've probably gone over some of the basic information. But again, feel free to follow up with any of the faculty if you have specific questions. You can follow up with advising, um, you know, if you need to chat more about your elective options. and. Um, we look forward to repeating this presentation and attracting more students in the future. So thank you everybody have a great afternoon and we will be posting this presentation um, on our website, the College of Science Advising website, but feel free to fill out a survey as you're logging out. All right, thank you everybody. Okay, thank you.